Hey guys, it's Eddie and today I am back with another movie review for you all. Before I go on about the movie, however, I just wanted to mention that today's makeup is courtesy of Kato Potato's Blue Velvet makeup tutorial, her latest one. It's obviously not the same products, but um, I just wanted to say that this makeup look is loosely based on her um, tutorial even though it could never be anything like hers because she's fantastic but I just wanted to say in case any of you thought hmm, that looks familiar um, obviously it's nothing in comparison just wanted to mention that but today's movie that we'll be reviewing is Das Boot or The Boat directed by Wolfgang Peterson now this is a German film all about a German submarine patrolling the Atlantic Ocean um, in the midst of World War II and being involved in several conflicts with the British fleet. Now, this film is a film of epic proportions. Um, I've been wanting to watch this film for a while and one day when I had some free time at uni I decided to sit down and watch it. Now it is a lengthy picture, there's several cuts I believe but I watched the one that was around two and a half hours in length, I don't know which version that is, um, but I believe there are longer ones. Um, so if you're willing to um, sit it out for longer then by all means do, but that was just the cut that was available on Netflix, so I watched that one. Um, and it stars Jürgen Prochnow, Herbert Gronmeier and Klaus Venemann. I'm so sorry if I pronounce any of those wrong, um, but you get the gist, I hope. I think that this is a completely beautiful movie despite its sort of very harsh subject point, war, obviously. Despite that, there is a beautiful quality to this film. And there is both a story and particularly a resolution and a climax that is somehow satisfying but is quickly subverted um, and reminds you completely of the harsh realities of war and I think this is what is so brilliant about this film it's incredibly realistic um, you don't get the perfect picturesque um, sort of ending that you want I won't spoil anything but it isn't sort of all um, roses and smiles and happiness and dancing it's real, it's harsh and it's sad as well because you follow this crew throughout the whole of this movie and you become incredibly attached to them um, and that's something I can say without doubt um, of course you're watching these men sort of strive in an attempt to both fight for their country and stay alive and they may not hold the views of their country that you expect, they may not totally agree with what's going on in their country at the time, but these men have no choice but to fight. And it's a sort of, it's a, yes, it's a sort of fight for life, I suppose. And you come to see them strive, you, you see them emit incredible strength and resilience the characters in this film but all of it in the end seems sadly futile in the face of war and that's incredibly sad but it's it's reality and um, I think that's what's brilliant about this film Wolfgang Peterson really depicts um, the harshness and the, the sort of raw reality of the situation now the performances from each cast members are gritty, they're enthralling, they're incredibly emotional, they draw you in, you see them absolutely frantic in moments of conflict with the British fleet and you know when they're trying to man this vessel things are going wrong and the camera work amidst all of that, the shaking of the boat, the way it lurches, the way that these people are thrown forwards and backwards and the way that the camera follows them in these absolutely frantic moments is so just you can't escape from the sort of fear in your mind about what's going to happen to these people there are so many occasions in this film where you think oh these guys aren't going to make it and it's absolutely terrifying but it is brilliant because it keeps you absolutely captured throughout it's it's wonderful it's a wonderful experience 
Now, there is a sense of terrifying cabin fever, obviously, um, upon this boat amongst many of the sequences because not only are these people um, sort of fighting for their life, but there is occasional stints of boredom that we can see in this film. These sort of men are, are you know, in an incredibly confined space altogether and they're there for an, a long amount of time and the journey really never seems to end even though you can tell that they all want it to. One mission turns into another and they're kept on and it's just sort of endless array of boredom and then complete danger and panic and those lilts of emotion really sort of take you on a roller coaster ride and I think that's brilliant pacing in the film. Um, there are moments of rest and then there are moments of absolute chaos and it's incredible to watch and when you think everything's calmed down something will flare up again and you're fearing for these guys lives and it's incredibly scary um, but I think it's just a stroke of genius um, to be honest and the tension is just palpable in many of the moments in, in these in this epic epic film. What I also love about this film is Klaus Doldinger, Doldinger? I'm not good with names, I'm so sorry. Klaus Doldinger's soundtrack is stunning. It's beautiful. It's one in a million. And I think that's what adds to the beauty of this film. Even though there are sort of moments of tension and moments of fright and moments of where all hope is lost, this beautiful music, this score, accompanied by wonderful shots of the boat, sort of the submarine, sort of sailing across the open waters, give a sense of sort of tranquility amidst chaos. Sorry, I've just brightened things up a bit because um, I realised that I was like half cast in darkness, so I'm totally sorry about that. But yeah, I think the soundtrack and those sort of shots of the dust boot were incredibly beautiful and added sort of emotion and stability amongst chaos and it really just captured um just captured the feel of everything and the soundtrack was sustained throughout you know there were those familiar notes that popped up again and again in different forms in different formats Ambulance or police car, do 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 spoiling my video. Um, still waiting for the police car to go. When is it gonna leave? There we go. So it sort of emulates that calm before the storm, if you will, which is incredibly true um, in this movie. It's not even a figure of speech, I don't think. But nevertheless, I think that this film is absolutely timeless. If you watch this film, you would never have been able to guess that it was made in 1981. It is without sort of chronological definition. You can't pinpoint it and say, that was definitely made in that decade. If you never knew that it was made in 1981, you wouldn't guess. Because not only is its subject matter timeless, because it's history and it's depicting you know, the realities of war, despite that, it's, you know, it's skill, like, the way that it is shot, the way that every movement is handled is so professionally done, so convincingly done, that you don't feel like you're watching anything that is made in a particular decade. You could watch it now, like I did, and be just as thrilled as people would have been in 1981. It is absolutely timeless. I think it's an incredible piece of German cinema, an incredible piece of cinema by itself. It's absolutely stunning. Now I will admit that I did fall asleep watching this film, but I not in the middle, like I paused it halfway through, had a nap and then like woke back up and watched the rest. Not because I was bored, but because I was incredibly tired. But nevertheless, it is a long one. So set yourself aside a good three hours to watch this film and really get yourself into it but don't worry because it will draw you in it will grip you from the very start and 
yeah, that's all I have to say about this film. It's just absolutely beautiful and I would recommend it, recommend it to anyone who loves a good old war epic, um, anyone that loves sort of adventurous sort of action films. Um, but this also has some beauty. I think it's different. I don't think you can pin it down exactly, but Dust Boot is just a stunning piece of cinema and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, cast performances, direction and all. It was what you might call perf a perfect film. But nevertheless, that's my take on Dust Boot. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. If I had to give it a rating, I'd probably give it five out of five stars because it was just gorgeous. It was a gorgeous piece of cinema. And as always, you can request movies for me to review by messaging me on my Tumblr or commenting below. But that is it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!